Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about senescent cells and in particular senescent skin cells known as melanocytes and how they can drive skin aging and the relationship between that and telomeres. So the majority of the research that I'll talk about in this video comes from a recent article that came out the end of last year in EMBO and it's senescent human melanocytes drive skin aging via paracrine telomere dysfunction. So there's probably a lot of terms in there that need a bit of explanation first before we go into describing the results. And so because I research it and it's the main focus of this paper, we'll start with cellular senescence. So cellular senescence is one of the hallmarks of aging, which I've mentioned before in a video, but effectively it can be characterised by two key characteristics, one of which is the prevention of proliferation, so the cell stops dividing, and then secondly is the secretion of factors refer to as the senescence associated secretory phenotype. And so proteins that are secreted from these senescent cells include signaling molecules and inflammatory factors, and they can be also thought of as a form of extracellular communication to the surrounding cells. And so senescent cells can be considered a good thing or a bad thing depending on context. So senescent cells are thought to be good for aiding tissue regeneration, wound healing, and it's also known to be important for embryonic development. However, as I said, some of these factors are inflammatory factors and chronic inflammation is also associated with cancer and aging, and it can also cause tissue disruption. So due to both these positive and negative aspects to senescent cells, it makes them very interesting to study. And so some of the questions that are trying to be addressed are what actually causes a cell to become senescent in the first place? And then can senescent cells be selectively killed? And is the removal actually a good thing? So it turns out there are actually many different ways that a cell can become senescent, but the one that we'll focus on here is DNA damage. And then in terms of being able to remove senescent cells and effectively kill them, We'll talk, talk briefly about senolytics at the end of the video and how that was used to prevent skin aging. So since we're talking about skin, what does the structure of skin actually look like? So as I've drawn out here, probably a little bit mess messily, if that's a word, is the epidermis, where you can see the dead layer of cells at the top, and then a load of cells known as keratinocytes. And at the bottom, you see these melanocytes which you can see are interacting with the keratinocytes. And so the keratinocytes are the ones that proliferate and regenerate the skin layer. So what happens to the skin during aging? Well, there is an age associated skin thinning and there's also a loss of collagen and a gain of elastic fibers. And the kind of the reason why this might happen is thought to be due to a loss of the replicative capacity of these keratinocytes. So that regeneration and repair of the skin layer is becomes defective. So we've talked about the skin now, we've talked about cellular senescence, the last thing we need to talk about briefly are telomeres. So telomeres and telomere shortening are another hallmark of aging. So what are telomeres? Well telomeres are often referred to as the shoe caps on the end of the chromosomes and so basically the function of telomeres is to be a protective structure because at the end of these chromosomes you've got well, an end of DNA, so you've got effectively what looks like a double strand break. And so that gets protected and bound by this complex of proteins known as the sheltering complex. And so this helps, as I said, to prevent recognition of the ends of DNA as being a double strand break, which is a form of DNA damage. However, as a cell divides and replicates, these telomeres shorten. And so if they shorten over time, you lose that protection and you can cause DNA damage signaling, which can then drive senescence. However, there's also senescence induction via DNA damage that is independent of the shortening of the telomeres. And so that's in particular relevant to melanocytes that actually don't proliferate much whilst the keratinocytes do. So now we are in a position to discuss these results, which I've split into three key take home messages. So the first one is senescent melanocytes accumulate during skin aging. So how do you actually identify a senescent melanocyte? Well, identifying senescent cells is no trivial process, but one marker that can be used is the expression of P16, which is a protein involved in the cell cycle arrest. And so in the study, they took some skin punch biopsies from humans who they classified as being both young and old. And they took these biopsies from the sun-hidden region underneath the upper inner arm 
and they looked for the expression of p16 and they found that it actually co-localized in these skin samples to the melanocytes and that the levels were higher in the older samples and interestingly they also saw in the older samples a decrease in the expression of SIRT1 which is also a protein that is its decline is associated with aging. The second key result from this study is that senescent melanocytes induce telomere damage and senescence in surrounding cells in a paracrine manner. So in addition to looking at P16 in these tissue samples, in the samples they also looked at the telomeres and they looked at both the length of the telomeres and whether or not the telomeres were damaged. And so interestingly they didn't see any significant differences in the length but they did see an increase in what are referred to as TAFs. And so these are telomere associated foci, and this is when the telomeres co-localize with a protein mark known as gamma H2AX, which is a sign of the DNA damage signaling response. And so this was higher in the samples from the older samples. So the number of TAFs in these senescent melanocytes was counted and then associated with the level of dysfunction in the telomeres of the surrounding keratinocytes and they found that keratinocytes surrounding melanocytes with three TAFs had a greater number of dysfunctional telomeres than those with no TAFs. So they could do this analysis by looking at different markers for the telomeres for this DNA damage mark and for markers that identify a melanocyte and so the TAFs are what look like the Google Chrome symbol. <laughs> um, anyway, these results made it clear that the keratinocytes were being impacted by the senescent melanocytes. But the question was how? What's actually going on? So to do this, they looked at the SASP, this secretory phenotype of the senescent cells, and they identified two proteins in particular that were much higher in levels. And this was CCL5 and CXCL10, which are both chemokines and referred to as signaling molecules. So how could these chemokines cause telomere damage in the keratinocytes? Well, using a variety of different experimental tests using different inhibitors, they came up with this model, which is that, as we said, the senescent melanocytes that secrete these chemokines as part of the SASP, one of which is IP10, the CXCL10, it actually binds a receptor known as CXCR3, and downstream of this, they saw an increase of reactive oxygen species and that is known to potentially cause the presence of telomere associated foci and so this is a form of paracrine signaling. And so the last part of this paper establishes whether clearance of senescent melan melanocytes could have an impact and what they saw is that through the use of a senolytic drug they could actually rescue epidermal atrophy which is the thinning of the skin layer using a 3D human epidermal model. So they treated these models with the senolytic compound, ABT737. Senescent cells are particularly vulnerable to this compound, and so for this treatment, the senescent cells can undergo apoptosis, which is a form of cell death. And when they had effectively killed some of the senescent cells, they also saw a decline in the P16 positive melanocytes, showing that the senolytic was working. But the cool thing was that they also prevented the formation of TAFs in the keratinocytes. And so since skin aging is thought to be due to the loss of the replicative capacity of these keratinocytes, this therefore shows a direct link between senescence induction, loss of keratinocyte proliferation and skin aging. And so this study shows some potential optimism in the use of senolytics to prevent skin aging. So as always, I hope you've learned something and thanks for listening.